love as it. host or at minimum it, present man. at the Oscars. All right, uh, 40 points. That's about all he hasn't done yet. 40 points, 14 love rebounds, it. six assists, three blocks, including stuff in Joel and B. Y'all all saw it last night. Bucks beat the Sixers. Uh, Vincent Goodwill, the last time we had an MVP discussion with you, um, you, I think you said it was like picking between songs in the key of life, inner visions, and fulfilling this first finale. And it depends on which day you ask. And I get it. I, it's just, it, it's, it's that kind of race. So if you were um, voting today, is Giannis your guy? And we won't hold be. you to it, by the way. He might be oh, in case, and, and in case. <laughs> I thought I could pin you down. No, nobody, nobody pins me down except for Kelly Rose. But if anyone, in case oh, anybody, stop, stop. If, if anybody stop, can't stop, see stop. behind me over there, that is Inner Visions on vinyl. Mm. Mm. My favorite might be my, might be my favorite Stevie album. Now, yeah. to Giannis, the, remember the thing Michael Smith that I talked to you about last week, and I said. And you scoffed at me. You said, "No, no, no, you can't do that." And I said, "Who do you who do you trust the most in a playoff uh, series to play like himself?" My yeah. reasoning for that is, is to prevent a Karl Malone situation. It's to prevent an MVP from looking fraudulent in the light, right? Because he cannot keep up or exceed his regular season performance. With Giannis, we know that that's not the case. We know that he ri he raises his level of game. He rises the team above with him, and he makes plays late in the game. When you looked at that, at that play, not just the Joel Embiid block, but just the simple fact that Joel Embiid did not go get the ball. Can you imagine that situation happening to Giannis on the other end? Can you imagine that situation happening to Nikola Jokic? No, you can't. Yeah. Because, well, you, yeah, you I can. can. How? No, how here's, no, here, no, no. What? Well, here's why. Here's how. This is what I'm saying. Didn't? Wasn't that what happened with Giannis? Like for years. People have advocated for MVP, even though it's a regular season award, MVP being voted on after the after the end of the playoffs. Because if MVP comes up short, which happens a lot, we end up being like, oh, actually, we should have gave it to Jordan. Oh, we should have gave it to LeBron. It's, didn't it, again, you would know. Was it the first or second time Giannis won MVP where they came up short in the playoffs? Maybe in both times, and he wouldn't guard Jimmy Butler in the bubble. It was all kind of criticism right. about him not, yeah, mm -hmm. not being a real MVP. Or even the year before that, they went out early. So Giannis just became this dude that you're talking about. Last year, as Michael Holly has said, he got better as not, not just the playoffs, but the finals went on. So he just became this dude that you can count on to come up in the biggest of moments. Only reason I, I, I scoffed at it, as you said, Vinny, is it's just like, but it's a regular season award. Like nobody would blame you if a, if a, if a team falls short in the playoffs and be like, "Oh, y'all got it wrong." Or I, I don't know. I just don't think that's a that's fair. Uh, okay, to, okay, for, okay. Right, you know, okay. that's all. When you think of fraudulent MVPs, which MVPs do you think about, Michael Smith? When I, you I, think I, I don't think that I don't think Nash was fraudulent. I, I'm not one. I of didn't say people. that. I didn't say that. Well, that's was the one that comes to mind for most people. Well, not but most people. A fraudulent MVP, like somebody that really didn't deserve it. That was an undeserving yeah, MVP tough. for that regular season. Yeah, they're, they're, the year they're, Dirk, they're, the, maybe the, year, the year Dirk won it. Is that the year that the Warriors beat the Mavs in the in yeah, the first they won, Yeah, but they yeah. won like sixty. They won a they bunch should, of right. I mean, yeah. I mean, he, that, that's my point. He deserved it. Like I can't think yeah. of an MVP that I look at like he didn't deserve MVP. Once again, for the regular for the regular Malone, season. The Carl Malone MVPs I feel were fraudulent. The Russell Westbrook MVP I felt was fraudulent. I don't feel either fraudulent. one of these Nashes. Yes, fraudulent. Wow. As in, as in the you voters, not me, because I didn't vote for him number one. You voters put a value on the number 10. As if Russell Westbrook averaging 31, 9, and 9, a bunch of people wouldn't have voted for him. They put the value on a triple double as opposed to Did you feel that way that year? Yes. That's why I voted him time? third. Yes. Okay. All right. You put him in. Who'd you who'd you vote for that year? Do you remember? I voted for James Harden as, that as, year. Oh wow. Well, that's I voted for James Harden that year. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's there's a fraudulent. Okay, <laughs> there it is. I thought of a fraudulent MVP. Thank you very much. <laughs> Michael, oh, Smith. My God. Hey, Michael Smith. <laughs> Michael Smith. Message. Right. <laughs> right. But but for but for Giannis, I look at him as being almost inevitable at this point. When, not an inevitable MVP because I don't know if he's going to win it, but as as part of a as part of being a figure, a guy who's going to make plays on both sides of the ball, 
whenever it gets late in games, we can say whatever we want about the competitiveness of the Eastern Conference. And it is really, really, the margins are really, really thin. But you mean to tell me that you're going to bet against that guy when it counts the most, as long as all everything else is created equal? I don't. And as much as I like Joel Embiid and what he's doing on both ends of the floor, and essentially when he was off the floor, that's when Giannis started running wild. That's how important he is to Philadelphia. But I can't see myself with the history of this award and everything that goes into this. I don't know if I can see myself giving a vote to anyone else but Giannis at this point. So let me. So I'll say this. I, 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 to, to recap, and I, and I don't mean this to be flipped or dismissive, but literally, yes, you do. Your approach. No, no, I really don't. It, you know, because I because I would just be flipped. So I wouldn't qualify it if I w- if I was going to be flipped. I'll just be flipped. You know, I have no problem doing that. I, so your approach of who do I trust the most to be himself in the biggest moments or to step up in the biggest moments in the postseason? That's literally what will help you sleep at night with your vote. You don't want to. You don't want to look back with regret. On your vote is, is is essentially how it, 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 when it's this close when it's not so obvious you want to be able to say I voted for the right guy then have him be exposed opposite you know like fraudulent exposed be exposed in the posters and be like see I knew all along I shouldn't have given it to that guy that's that's what you don't want to have happen yeah when the margins are thin now if it's something where some mm-hmm. one person is that far and away better than everybody yeah. else then that's a little different but when terms of win shares and PER and some of those advanced stats, the defensive box, uh, you know, box score plus minus and everything else. Giannis is a hair behind Nikola Jokic, and I have I have no problem giving my vote to Jokic. I have no problem giving my vote to either one. The only thing I'm saying is is that if Giannis were this is two months from now, and you're asking me what player is going to lift his team above where he's at now, above where they're at now, I think that would be Giannis. Now. If you're asking me who's the best player in basketball, I'm going to tell you it's I know Kevin you Durant. That. Right. Right. I, yeah, I know he's there. Right. Yeah, yeah. But if you're asking me who's inevitable, who you're who you're almost designed to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dread it. Who, run from it. <laughs> I put it like this. You know what? How how much fear does Giannis place in you at this point now that he's certified as a champion? And repeated that performance, and ba- and basically not taking a step back, and allow this team to take a step back because they haven't. Yeah, and see, and you you spot man. I love y'all brothers, man. I can talk, I can talk ball with y'all all day. I want to talk ball, I want to talk something else too. But Vinny, great point on Giannis. I was thinking about this. You guys help me out. I can't think of a player who's an MVP, multiple MVP like Giannis is, Defensive Player of the Year champion in his prime who just says I got my one championship. I'm all set. No, 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 no. That's not how they it works. Them. Those guys. Them. I, I, let me take. I'm taking a, a domino. Okay, I'm taking all of these. I'm taking all of yeah. these. So what he scares me. He scares me. If I'm a, a, an opponent, that's the guy you got to watch out for both conferences, both of them. But I want to talk to you about Stevie. Okay, Stevie. Okay, look, <laughs> your, your, your comment about inner visions. Inner Visions has probably three of my favorite songs ever. Visions is so underrated. Beautiful song. Oh, man. Uh, Jesus Children. I love Jesus Children. And then Living for the City, you got Stevie at his storytelling best. I'm, I, you see, it's like a film. But the reason Songs of the Key of Life will always get it for me is you get, first of all, he cheats. It's a double album. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he has storytelling but just thinking at the time, nobody was doing the technological stuff then that Stevie was doing. So I'm going to give that one. That always go, uh, go win. I got no me. argument. I have no argument against Songs in the Key because my favorite song of all time in any genre as. is As. As is it. Mm-hmm. As, now, mm-hmm. we talked about those terrible wedding songs that y'all were y'all were sporting a year ago, talking about Meet Me at the Altar in Your Right Dress. It's a great yeah, yeah, song. We, it's a great we, we, we song. Not, we're not doing that with song. ass. We're not doing that with knocks me off my feet. We're not doing that with Sir Duke. The thing about inner visions that gets me is that it's tight. It's like, I think 10 tracks to maybe 10, 11 tracks. You've got yeah. too high golden lady, higher ground. Mm. There's nothing Ooh. that you can skip. And considering I have it on vinyl, you, you ain't skipping. You got to listen to that thing all the way through essentially. And not saying that songs in the key of life have skippable songs, but you're taking a chance.
because it's such a full album of Gary Carter. This Gary Carter else. says, "How about this, Vinny? Gary Carter says nine songs, forty-four minutes of brilliance. Wow, nine it's songs, tight. forty. That play, player tight. efficiency rating off the charts, right?" It, it's I, I, look, Stevie didn't need the whole. We ain't even mentioned. He didn't need the whole floor to get his bucket. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't get his bucket. He I mean, I, we, we got we got to go back to intervisions, man. I mean, like uh, it's. Oof. I don't. I, I just. I think I, Benny. I think you've had it right. I just to pick one. It, it is. It is a great comp for the MVP because when you pick one, you feel like you're doing a disservice to the other two. It feels like it's. It's like if if because if, if he picked fulfilling his first finality, and you go boogie on reggae woman and creeping. You know, mm, it, yeah. it's mm. like, I mean, come on, I, I, bruh. This is, yeah, I wouldn't want to have, I wouldn't want to be put on the spot to pick the better one, but I guess when in doubt, you can go with the double. But I did, it is cheating. So you can't but go I with did the double. Hear, <laughs> it is, it is. I did hear this, though, and for, for what it's worth. Now, I don't know. This is a long time ago. Maybe he's changed his mind. Shit, sir. But Stevie Duke once said, off my feet. Stevie, oh my God. Mm. Stevie once said about as, he said, I've never written more beautiful words. Yeah. Now he, he said that. Okay. Oh, so yeah. I don't know. Another Until star. the day that eight times eight times eight is four. Can you imagine? Look, man, I've never proposed to a woman before, but if I did, something like that had better be ringing in my head. You know the, all those memes that we that we see and everything on Facebook and Instagram, and, and it's uh, accompanied by a picture of one dude slapping another picture, a, another guy, and it said, yeah. if that if you don't love me like that, I don't want it. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. If I don't feel like Stevie felt on as, I don't believe in that type of love. Y'all can have that jacket ass. Meet me at the altar in your white dress. Well, I will take so ass. Just keep, I will be a little more. Hey, <laughs> hey, Gary, roll the music because we gotta get this, we gotta get this last break in. I, I will just say this: uh, two other lyrics that will uh, they are in the as. Bracket. Did you of know the true tournament. love acts for nothing? Her acceptance is the way we play. Wait. If I was your girlfriend and adore, as in love's too weak yeah. to define just what you mean. Just the reason I bring up sign of the times is mm. 35 years ago today. I was like, make sure I was right. March 31st, 1987. Sign mm -hmm. of the times. Happy anniversary. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us. 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.